Now, what I really want you guys to get out of this talk is a better understanding about what stress is doing to your body, as well as what are the warning signs towards burnout. As George said, it's a journey. It's not a, it's, you know, burnout's a destination. There's always warning signs prior. But also what you can do about it. But what I first want to do is I want to show you what burnout looks like to me. That was my face. I think it's a pretty good angle. Um, now, two thoughts went through my head that morning. My first thought was, holy shit, I look like Shimbra Athen from the Game of Thrones. Now, I'm not joking, that actually was my initial thought, followed very closely by, all right, I've got to admit it, I, stress and anxiety are actually doing this to my body. Now, I was in complete denial at this stage. I actually would have told you that stress and anxiety was not the cause of shrimp Baratheon face, as well as all the other health issues that I was having. Now, I'm going to get that off the screen for you. <laughs> um, I was also suffering really badly from other health issues as well at this stage. I was suffering really badly from digestive health issues. I was diagnosed with chronic <coughs> IBS, a functioning bowel disorder, and when you break those words down, it makes zero sense, as well as I had every allergy intolerance under the sun. Now, I was also struggling with really bad inflammation throughout my body. One doctor actually said it had the beginning stages of rheumatoid arthritis. And as a 26-year-old who's really fit and active, that was pretty devastating. As well as my immune system was absolutely shattered. I was already finished my degree. I'd already done nutrition. I was already a digestive specialist at that stage, which was a little bit embarrassing. And I already had a degree in physiology, so I should have known better. So what I did after that morning I started looking at my work schedule. I was like, okay, could it possibly be the 17 hours a day that I'm working? Let's have a gander. So I actually went back to my physiology books and was asked myself a couple of questions like, all right, if stress can cause trimbarathian phase, what is the point of stress? Like, I didn't understand if stress was that bad, why do we have it as humans? So I went back and started looking at stress in more detail. And in particular, I started looking at fight or flight response. Who here knows what the fight or flight response is? Yeah, majority of you do. So for those of you who don't know what it is, it's an automatic response that we have to stress or to threats. Now, when I looked at the fight or flight, I actually had to sort of rewind time and look back at, okay, what was the point of the fight or flight? Because, hey, we don't live in a world where we're having to fight or flee everything in our everyday life. So I went back and looked at our ancestors, and I was like, okay, well, Fight or flight kind of made sense to them, you know, they were hunter and gatherers, they were in more life-threatening situations, you know, if you're walking down a path and uh, you come across a lion, tiger or a bear, I'm pretty sure you want the fight or flight response where instead of going, I wonder if this animal is going to kill me, your body's already automatically responding, going, hey, you've got to run away or you've got to flee, or you're going to die. So when I started really looking at the fight or flight response, you know, it's only really meant to be short term. If I'm running away or fighting a lion, tiger or a bear, Realistically, I'm only going to be doing that for like 15 minutes, half an hour, you know, or I'm dead, you know, I'm going to be doing one or the other. I'm not really going to be in that moment all day. And so when I looked at that, I was like, oh, it's a really short-term kind of stress. So then I fast-forwarded to today, and fast-forwarded to my life in particular, I was like, well, I'm not running away from lions, tigers, and bears, you know, I'm, I'm dealing with stress every day. Our stress is no longer those issues. It really is our work. It really is finances. It is startups. Um, I actually have quite a few clients as startups that are set doing startup companies. And it's deadlines, it's targets, it's employees, it's all of these things that can become very overwhelming and they're not short term. We're not in a situation where, we're, where we can run away or we can really fight our responsibilities in the, in the workplace. And these are lasting, you know, not 15 minutes, half an hour, they're lasting eight hours, 10 hours, 16, 17, if you're me, um, hours a day, and we never get that break. So then my next question to myself was, all right, so what does the fight or flight actually do to the body? And so if we look at the physiology of it all, the minute we're in fight or flight, our body automatically changes, our systems completely change. So our heart rate increases, we start producing stress hormones like cortisol and adrenaline, as well as the way that our blood flows in our body completely changes. So then I started looking at three areas in the body that was really impacting me at the time, and started looking at, well, what's the impact of fight or flight on those areas? So I really 
focused on digestion, immunity, and inflammation because there were three areas that I was like completely not coping with. And so when I started looking at digestion, and a lot of people that have burnout have a lot of digestive issues too. When I looked at digestion and I looked at it, burnout, I'm running from a lion, I'm running away from a lion tiger, but I don't need to be digesting food. It really isn't important at that point in time. So our body starts to just choose it. All right, in this moment, you don't need to digest food. So I'm going to take the blood flow from your digestive tract and take it to your arms, your legs, your heart, to all the different areas in the body that's important for you to run away or to fight whatever's coming into your, into your life. But if we're constantly redirecting blood flow away from our digestive system, we're not digesting food properly. Now, how many of you know somebody that has IBS or has IBS or struggling with some type of digestive issue? Yeah. <laughs> now you know why. You can tell them. It's like, stop running away and stop trying to fight your problems. Um, but that is one of the biggest, one of the biggest reasons um, for digestive issues. The second thing was immunity. Now, if we're in fight or flight, don't really think we need to be fighting those infections that we have or those this bacteria that we have in our body, and especially for 15 minutes, half an hour, it's not going to be a huge issue. But if we're doing that consistently, day in, day out, our immune system really takes a beating in times of stress and anxiety. Now, the problem with the immunity aspect is if you're letting in all these bugs all the time and you, you're not dealing with it, your body will take over and will cause a lot of immunity issues. So that's emphasizing my head shimmer out in face. And inflammation, now, our inflammatory responses dramatically change as well in times of stress and anxiety. Now, the next question I asked myself was, I surely didn't just wake up burnt out. Like, surely there were warning signs. Like, surely I should have known that I was going to burn out. So, the next few questions that I asked myself was, I, I actually really encourage you guys to ask these questions to yourself as well and really get a better understanding about the lead up to burnout. So, asking yourself the questions like, What's your sleep telling you? Are you able to fall asleep easily? Are you waking up throughout the night? Are you waking up feeling really good? Or are you waking up feeling agitated, excited, stressed out? Or are you waking up really fatigued? The other aspect of sleep and energy is, are you fatigued throughout the whole day or completely wired in the evening? The second thing is, what is your gut telling you literally? If I listened to my gut prior, I wouldn't have been in a situation where I was barely able to leave my house. So what's your gut telling you? Are you bloated after you eat? Are you going to the toilet too much or too little? Are you feeling nauseous? Are you, are you losing your appetite? Those types of questions. And then also, also what's your immune system telling you? One of the biggest things that I really remember about my immune system, and that was a really big warning sign, one was I had the shingles four times before I was 23, so that was a pretty big warning sign, as well as I also remember always working really hard throughout the year. I'm actually from Australia, so we would work really hard in, like, throughout the year at the end of the year, go on these massive holidays. And if you're this kind of person like me, where you work really hard, but when you go on holidays the first four, few, maybe four to five days, you're really sick, pretty good sign that you're, that you're burnt out. So what I really want to talk to you about as well and what I want to leave you with is what you can do to prevent burnout and what you can do for your digestion. So what I do with my clients, I talk about the what, when, where. So because I'm a nutritionist, obviously I have to tell you a little bit about nutrition. Um, so I want you to think about the what. What are you eating? Now, a lot of people, when they work in startups, when they're really busy, it's whatever I can grab. Let me just grab something that's going to fuel me. Is it, you know, it doesn't matter what's in it. I just need to eat. So are you eating food that is highly processed? Are you eating food that's really sugary? Are you drinking alcohol? Now, all of these things are going to actually elicit inflammation, which is not what you want because your body's already inflamed if you're stressed or anxious. Or are you eating foods that are vegetables? All the things we know we have to eat, like everyone knows we have to eat. I've been a nutritionist for 10 years. Everyone will come in and tell me, oh yeah, I know what I have to eat. It's like, well, why aren't you doing it? Um, so we all know what we need to do. So it's making sure that we're making those options. And the reasons why you need to make those options is to prevent burnout. The second one is when. Now, when are you eating? Are you eating when you're feeling calm? Are you eating when you're stressed? Are you, fun fact, that who, who knows the opposite of what the fight or flight is? Two people. It's called rest and digest. So we're in it for a reason. 
Um, so you need to start eating food when you are in rest and digest. And the best way to get into rest and digest before you eat is time your meals so you know when you're going to have to eat. And the second thing is make sure you take a break before you eat. So take a couple of deep breaths, go for a walk, clear your head, and try and get your body into rest and digest. Now, I think what Naraj is doing a meditation, so taking some of those tools into that, into those moments before you eat is really good. And also asking yourself where you eat. How many of you eat at your desk? How many of you eat in the car? Yeah, so there's not so many people in the car, but I always talk about where are you eating? Are you eating when you're out? Are you eating when you're going somewhere? Are you eating in the car? Are you eating at your desk? Because where you're eating is really going to dictate how you're going to digest as well. So if you're at your desk and you're getting emails and you're trying to do work, and that's already automatically putting stimulus into your body and you're automatically becoming stressed. So taking time away from your desk. Don't have your phone with you. Shut your laptop down and make sure that you're eating and giving yourself time to actually properly eat, eat food. Now, look, burnout is a, is a destination. It's, it's really not something that you just should wake up and feel. It really is something that you can prevent. And preventing burnout is so much easier than overcoming it. I've actually had to overcome burnout twice in my life. And I'm telling you this now, preventing it is so much easier. The first, the first time I burnt out, it took me three months to overcome. And the second time, it took me nearly a year. So just being really conscious about where your body's at, ask yourself those questions. Look at your diet. Look at your sleep schedule. Because you only, you know, if you burn out, it's, it's really going to prevent your business. You know, a lot of people have to um, shut their businesses down because they can't cope. So that's my problem.